So today we have Dr. John Christian Fox, who's a faculty at the University of California Irvine Medical School, and he's done a lot of work at the medical student level, uh, teaching them about portable ultrasound and has a lot of great ideas on how medical students can and need to learn more about this technology. So Dr. Fox, w- what do you see and why do you think medical students or young physicians need to care about ultrasound and specifically uh, portable ultrasound? Yeah, well, you know, I think that... Um that uh, a couple things. Number one is that um, there's a big there's a big push coming down um, from uh, the government and also patient uh, safety advocacy groups to try to uh, curtail the amount of unnecessary medical radiation. And so when you can when you can um, you know this ultrasound first approach where if you can get to the answer with ultrasound. Um, if you can answer your clinical question first with ultrasound and not have to turn to um, another imaging modality um, that uses the radiation, then, of course, you know, we're doing our patients a service in that sense. Um, and, you know, the, the problem with ultrasound is that it's deceptively easy to do. Once you start digging into it a little bit more, you realize it's actually a difficult skill that takes, you know, um, you know at least a residency uh, to, to get good at it, and so the, the, the challenge is to is to convince residency programs and I mean really medical schools that mm-hmm. that we should start ultrasound training much earlier. Right? To, you take a doctor who's been working out in the community for ten years and then try to get them to change their workflow, whether they be in primary care or or one of the surgical subspecialties or emergency medicine or whatever it is. Um, to try to get them to all of a sudden change their their workflow um, based on a technology that they didn't already know it doesn't come naturally to them or instinctively to them. It's very difficult to change that behavior. So how is ultrasound integrated into the UCI medical school curriculum? What does it look like for the, the medical student? Um, starting in their first year, um, they have a lot of introduction to physics and albology uh, initially in the first few weeks of medical school, and then um, then it, then it, uh, during their clinical foundations course, which is a course that runs actually all four years of medical school. In the first two years of medical school, the clinical foundations course is really heavily weighted in the history and physical exam stuff, and so the the ultrasound is integrated during clinical foundations. Okay. Um, mostly in the, it, it starts to really pick up in the second half of the first year of medical school, mm-hmm. and uh, and then the second year we introduce all the pathology to them on ultrasound. So ultrasound the first year is really just obtaining windows of all the normal organs mm-hmm. and correlating what they're learning in anatomy with what they can see with ultrasound and just getting more comfortable with the machine and getting confident in windowing the organs. And then the second year um, we have. Uh, pathology-based simulators. We have uh, standardized patients with pathology, mm-hmm. and we have, um, you know, we have over, we have thousands of, of, of clips, of video clips of, of ultrasounds uh, with pathology. Have you made any of this course information available on the internet for other medical students uh, or residents who want to learn some about ultrasound? All of my lecture content is on iTunes, um, and it's free. Anybody can get to it. You can go to it right now and type in Fox Ultrasound under under uh, iTunes Store. Right. And it's free. You can get all my content there. I've got, I don't know, 30 or 40 video podcasts on there now. What advice would you give to a medical student or even resident who wants to start learning more about using and reading ultrasound? Well, um, it could be, a, it could be a, a self-directed skill up to a certain point, right? So if you have access to an ultrasound machine and you have access to didactic content, um, I think that's a great uh, place to start and you know, get your hands, get, get your, you know, kind of get your hands wet. But then once you want to really differentiate pathology from normals, you're going to need some, um, someone to, to, to bridge that process. I think mm-hmm. one, one way is with, um, there's various simulators out there that are really good. Um, I have to be involved with one simulator called Sonosim. Okay. S O N O S I M dot com. Okay. And it's a pathology based simulator. It's got 150 path cases in it. And it's got a virtual transducer that you move in three different, um, degrees. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it changes the ultrasound on the screen. And so it's, uh, it's a way to, to, you know, have a case presented to you. And then you have to try to figure out whether there's, 
pathology there or not. It's everything from musculoskeletal to gallbladder to cardiac stuff. I think simulation is is a nice way before you're ready to, you know, really go out on your own and try to learn it. But right. so there's a lot of self directed things you can do, but ultimately, you know, we all need that mentor, that fellowship director, residency director, ultrasound director during during medical school and residency to, to officially usher that process through so that people know whether they're looking at something normal or not because otherwise right. you're just kind of scanning in a vacuum, which is fine when you first get started to uh-huh. just feel com- confident with it, but ultimately you need someone to tell you, you know, actually that's the air in the duodenum, and it's the second portion of the duodenum runs just posterior to the gallbladder, and any good sonographer can make air in the duodenum look just like gallstones, okay. and any good sonographer can, can, can get, you know, 25 views of the gallbladder without showing the actual gallstones that are in there. So, okay. you know, there's little felt, there's, there's subtleties like that, tricks of the trade that I think you can only learn with, with proper, you know, mentorship, supervision, whatever. So what could a medical student do at their institution if they wanted to see more ultrasound integrated into their didactic and clinical curriculum? You know, one of the things a medical student can do, they can, they can all sit down and um, put a petition together for the dean, uh-huh. and, um, and they can sign a petition. You know, just say, hey, we want ultrasounds. Look at what they're doing at uh, these other medical schools. University of South Carolina is doing a lot of ultrasound medical school. Wayne State University, uh-huh. uh, University of uh, oh, should I say Ohio State University. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, these, these schools uh, are really doing a lot of ultrasound in the medical school. So they put together a petition. They could cite these other schools, and then I'm more than happy for any of these deans to contact me directly. And and uh, I, you know, I. If they want to find me out to the, to the school, do a little grand rounds. I've done this at a bunch of different places. 